Now is a good time to introduce the concept of rendering. Rendering is when uh, the information which we've used to define our scene is assembled to create the image. To render in 3ds Max we can either hold down the shift key and type Q or we can use the rendering menu which you'll find at the top of the 3ds Max window. Click on rendering menu and then just select render and we'll get an image of our scene. Now at this stage our scene contains the sphere and you'll also see a small red dot like a target laser dot on the sphere. It'd be nice to create a slightly better effect though with the laser beam actually visible so let's go and do that now. Close the render window and with the light selected and the modify menus available, so click on modify again if you need to, we'll now arrange to see that beam. So click on direction, or close directional panels and what we would like to do is have a look at atmospheres and effects menus. So down there underneath shadow map parameters you can see the atmospheres and effects menu. Click on that one to open that up and we'll add an atmosphere and effect. So when that menu opens, select Add, and in the pop-up window that appears, select Volume Light, and then OK. And that will add a volume light effect to our laser beam. If we now render that, you will see that the laser beam actually appears as a beam of light, which is the sort of effect that we are after. Okay, so we've worked with creating objects, we've worked with creating lights, we've added some effects and managed the parameters of our lighting. Now the next thing we need to look at is the use of materials in 3ds Max, because we need to apply some material types to the objects in our scene. The first thing we're going to do is to change our sphere so that it becomes a glass bead. To get into the materials menu in 3ds Max, you can type M on your keyboard and the materials menu will appear. It should appear as shown here but depending on your installation it might actually appear in this form which is the slate material editor. If that's the case then click on modes and select the compact material editor and we will see it in this form. Now, the Compact Material Editor consists of a top panel where our materials are entered and then a section below that where we can define the particular material. Now we're going to create a glass material to use for our sphere. So make sure that the first default material is selected and then we'll define that as glass. Just in the middle of that window you'll see there is a button marked standard. We're going to change this to an architectural material because glass is an architectural material. So click on standard and a menu will open up next to the material editor and you will see one of the options there is architectural. So select architectural and then click OK at the bottom of that window and we will become an architectural material. Now we'll just use a user defined uh, material here because we don't need to go to a lot of detail. So under the templates menu here you'll see user defined. Click the down arrow next to that to open the, mirror, the window up and down that menu you'll see glass clear as one of the materials that we can use. So select that and we have our clear glass material. The next thing to do is to apply that material to our sphere. To do that the easiest way is to simply click on the material and hold it and drag it to the sphere and let go. And the sphere will appear to disappear because it's now become clear glass. The other thing that we might want to do is to create another material for our plane. 
We'll do that in a little while. Close the material editor. Now that we have our glass bead created, let's just render that and see what we're getting. And you can see, if you look very closely, there's a bit of a glass bead visible there. But it's a little bit hard to discern. We'll make that look a lot better if we place a plane underneath that for the glass bead to sit on. So, go to the Create menu, select Geometry, and this time we will create a plane. So click on Plane, and then simply click and drag to produce a large plane across our grid. Once we've done that, we just need to place the plane on the grid. So click the Select and Move icon to the top and just change, ensure that Z parameter is set to zero so that we know that the, grid, the plane is coincident with the grid. In other words, it'll be underneath the glass bead. Now let's apply a material to that plane. So we will press M on the keyboard to open up the material editor and select the second default material. Now this will just be a standard material. We don't need to do a lot with this. So we will leave that as it is and we will move down to the, scroll down to the maps menu. So use your scroll bar which once again notice they're quite hard to see but click and drag go down to the maps menu and what I'm going to do is just create a, a basic checker pattern for, for our, our plane and apply that material to the plane. So select one of these uh, maps it doesn't really matter which one um, diffuse color will be fine so just click the box next to that and Underneath the map column, it currently has none, so we'll click the none and it will open up the menu with all the available maps for us. Now, near the top, you will see the checker map, so select that and click OK, and we'll apply our checker pattern to that material, and you'll see it there. At the moment, the tiling is set to 1. It would be nice if it was a little bit more sort of, uh, of a grid. So we'll change that tiling and maybe make that 10 for the one direction and 10 for the other. That will give us a 10 by 10 tiling pattern. And we'll just leave it black and white. It's fine. And once again, we'll apply that material to the plane. So click and drag to see plane 01 there and drop that material onto the plane. Closing our material editor and rendering that and we'll see what we have at this point. And we're beginning to see something a little bit more impressive there with the laser beam actually firing through the glass bead. To finish off, I'll just zoom in a little bit. Now to zoom in, I can use the scroll wheel on my mouse. So I click on the window, clear anything else I've got selected by clicking on the select icon and scroll in a little bit, just one click. Um, and then render that. And we have our view completed with the laser beam firing through the glass bead. Just looking at that, I think I could probably improve that by brightening up the laser beam a little bit. And there's perhaps a few other things that I can do to adjust it, but uh, we'll leave it as it is for the moment. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the course.